Yeah, a whole lot of confusion. Wow. I heard a whole lot of confusion. Now, this was based on the Black Jesus minister, right? And Nepal Shada. Nepal, Nepal, right? Like Nephilim, Nepal Shada, right? Um, speaking about and having a debate about whether whether Jesus, whether Jesus was a serpent in the garden. I think this is a classic. This is a classic one right here. And I think they finally kind of went head to head on this particular point. And from what I heard, <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Um, somebody said, what, well, dumbest debate topic ever? Because we want to save this one right here. You know, a few ones have weighed in on it, I think, already. You know, um, yeah. Da, 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 da. Okay, no, I'm just, I looked up. Yeah, Nepal Shada and Black Jesus Minister. So there was a lot of goofy, wacky stuff and, you know, very con, a lot of convincing, right? A lot of kind of convincing stuff and everything like that. But if you really study the Bible and really know the Bible, she refers to a lot of these different so-called biblical, you know, Bible experts, somebody who wrote some logo software and everything, Michael um, don't want to get his name wrong. I didn't really, you know, save his name, but it was one of the people that she, she mentioned, you know, that he said this and he said that, and he said the next thing, so forth and so on. So right here, 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 let us, um, address this right here. Let's, we got to break this down in order to really build so that ones can see the deception. It's a lot of deception. Right, the Elohim deception. We're gonna call this the Elohim deception. We made the Elohim deception. People are deceived by what Elohim really means or the context. And they're taking the Hebrew context out of context, the Hebrew context. Now, what is the Hebrew context of Elohim? Some say Elohim means God, right? Some say Elohim means gods. Right? Now the way the Nepal, right, Nepal, Nepal Shada philosophy. Elohim in the beginning, at least within the garden incident in Genesis chapter 3, she says that the Elohim or the, the, the God has God not said, has God not said. So she's introducing, you know, this word Elohim into her conversation because Elohim elsewhere in the Hebrew is brought out as gods, gods in the plural sense. Now the Yod mean the last two letters here, let's break this down right here. These last, these last two letters, well, reading from, um, Reading from right to left, we have the hey and then the little, the little, the little letter right there, like a, like a hand, so to speak, on the side. That's the yod and the mean. So whenever we have the yod and mean in Elohim, right, we have the yod and mean. It's a masculine pluralization, a masculine pluralization. So Elohim means power. When we get to the root of the word El, El come from Ayale, Ayale in the Afro-Semitic languages, right? We have Ayale or Ayel, Ayel in the Hebrew, right? And that's brought out in the sense of the language as El, the El, El, Ayel, Ayel. We can get into those roots right there, but just to break down that El at the root, El, really El, El, the really pronunciations the al al like a sere now there are five right some say there's five vowels right but really there are seven primary vowel sounds seven seven right there's the e u e r a e o sounds e u e r a e o sounds within the hebrew right and so we have the al al at the root of elohim now elohim may be translated right from the hebrew into english according to the context remember reading comprehension right reading comprehension is very very important now looking at the translation a lot of things get confused in translation we've been saying this over and over that things get lost in translation and this is a classic case the black jesus minister versus nepal shout out was jesus the snake in the garden of eden that was the topic right there and it seems to be a pretty um you know pop video you know a lot of ones checking it out you know no doubt 
And we're going to address this right here because we've been following some of this reasoning and some of the reasonings and some of the things going on in the the black of the black sphere, you know, the black sphere of the black consciousness area, because this all concerns us. We, the once lost, now found Beta Israel, the Beta Israel here in these here Americas and Caribbean. This, this, this regards us. Ones are going into our scripture and bringing out all sort of crazy, wacky ideas, right? A lot of philosophies. Right, give us a teaching of His Majesty, His Divine Majesty. Cause we don't want no devils. A lot of devils. What's a devil? Devil is basically a slander or a liar. So we're using the word within that context: a slander or a liar. Right, a slander, a liar, and also a link of deception. We could get to the the coin of Greek root of that particular word, um, diabolos, dia, dia, across, balin, to throw across. So there's a lot of psychic disturbance in ones and ones who are putting forth these ideas. I think that Black Jesus Minister, he really gave a really good presentation. He touched on some really grounded areas in the scripture to prove the point. And what Nepal Shaddad did, right, was very kind of shady. Let me say very shady. She she did point to many of her references, but basically what it is, it's a a um, first century, first to second century, um, more like perhaps a second cen century, but it became more, you could say, pronounced as we get like into the third century, right? Brought out this particular idea, this um, um, pseudo, we call it a pseudo-Gnostic idea. In fact, the Bible speaks about the pseudo-Gnostics. Gnostic, Noah, a Noah. Even Yeshua, within the Koine Greek, uses that word gnosis. And Gnostic, the gnosis. Gnosis is to know. It's a basic word for knowledge. We have words science. Science in the English come from scientia, scientia. In the Latin, the Romance, Roman language, Latin, scientia, where we get science, it means knowledge. Da'at, da'at. In the Hebrew, da'at. Right? As we have on the tree, the Kabbalistic tree of life, the Eitz Chaim, he... We have da'at means knowledge. In the Greek, we have gnosis or gnosis. It's like when one get a diagnosis, you get a diagnosis, or you ask for a prognosis, right? A prognosis. So just to put that word right there, the word knowledge, knowledge slash science. So the word knowledge slash science. Check, right? Because this is all going to connect with the you could say the bigger point concerning what really occurred in the Garden of Eden, who was the Nahash, the Nahash, a.k.a. some say the Nakash, but really the Nahash, the serpent in the Garden. Some like Nepal, shout out, right? Nepal. What does that name mean? I'm just curious right there because I'm hearing someone who did have some potential on certain subject matters as ones are hyping up ones and ones more and more appealing to this latter-day pseudo femaleism feminism and we got to point this out right here because the same way that eve or the isha in the gan Eden, right in the garden of eden the garden of delights as she was beguiled beguiled we see this also happening with the nepal shada and also with sanet and what he is promoting by bigging up someone thinking that because what she bringing forward appeals to one's itching ears or how they've been made to believe and to continue in that deceived way that they make believe right instead of really you know bringing out the truth but this is good this is good why it's good it's good because one's chose good and evil one's chose good and evil right so the consequence and it's the knowledge some like Nepal should not want to talk about the, the garden and the tree and wisdom. It was make one wise, but there was no wisdom there. It was not the true wisdom. It was the wisdom from below. She did touch on many different scriptures all over the place on serpent, you know, from Old Testament, New Testament, on wisdom, some wisdom quotes. And she tried to weave this into her particular argument that Yeshua, or as she would say, Yahawashah, Yeshua, was the serpent in the Gan Ba'ada. Now, Brother um, um, Black Jesus Minister, his response basically was bringing out one of the um, epistles of Rab Shaul, 
aka the Apostle Paul, where he really breaks it down that Yeshua is the last Adam, right? And therefore the Adam and Adam connection. You know, there was the first Adam in the Gan Ba'edin, and then we have the last Adam in the person of Robenu, Arunenu Yeshua, Ha Mushiach, or Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. But let's touch on the Elohim confusion. I noticed a little trick that goes on. And I would say it's at a heightened level of refinement when I listen to Nepal Shada when she's, you know, going through her thing and, and so forth and so on. And it seems, right, it seems as though since she is so determined to 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 back up this 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 beguiling, this be remember, Eve said that she was tricked. This trick. You're getting trick knowledge from a lot of these ones and ones. You're getting trick knowledge, right? First of all, she says Elohim. She said the Elohim was the evil one. She said that the Elohim was some divine council of gods or somebody else, so forth and so on. Who, which Elohim are you talking about? Which Elohim are you speaking about? What Elohim are you talking about? <laughs> the Elohim from the beginning? The Elohim from the beginning. There's a verse in the scripts that just came to heart and mind right here where he says, Before me there was no God, and after me there shall be no God. You, you, you know that verse right there? Let's see if we can bring that up right here. Because we're going on this on some inspiration right here, right? But there are some direct points that we will like to, like before me, right? There was, right? Um, let's see. Before me there was no God and after me there will not be any. Let's see if we can find this right here. He says before me, right? And we're going to go to the Hebrew as well. If we can find that particular verse, let's get to the Hebrew as well. Let's, let's go over here, right? There we go. Isaiah, Yeshaya, Isaiah 43 and 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahweh, hey, Yahweh. Now, when you go to Genesis, you see that in the beginning, we have Elohim. Elohim, right, in the context of Yahweh hey, or Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh, right, Yahweh, in the sense of he who be who he be, or the YHWH, Jehovah, translated as the, the Gentile Tetragrammaton, L-O-R-D, right, is always associated with God or Lord God. And you, you, you see that in the English, Lord God. That in the Hebrew is Yahuwah Elohim, right? She does the same trick. Nepal Shaddai does the same trick the serpent did in the, in the Gan Ba'edin. She's doing the same trick. The, the serpent comes to Hawa, comes to the woman, right? And he begins, this, strikes up this conversation, and he says, has Elohim not said? Has Elohim not said? If you go to chapter 2, Right, of Genesis, the chapter before, chapter 3 and 1, go to chapter 2, you'll find when the command was first given to Adam, when it was first given to Adam, it was Yahweh Elohim. It was Lord God or Jehovah Elohim. What happens is that the Nahash, the serpent, disrespects the true good, the true God, takes off the Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, the Yahweh, and just calls he who be who he be the Elohim. He is the power. He is the God powers in the singularity. So whenever Elohim is used of he who be who he be, right, the predominant majority times when it's used of he who be who he be, it's used in the singularity. We know this how? Because in reading comprehension of the Hebrew, we see that the verb, the verb is always singular regarding Elohim as it is in the beginning in the very first word, verse, right? The very first verse where it says, Be reishith, be reishith. And the Paul Shaddai don't know the divine wisdom in the scripture. She want to promote, like many want to promote the feminist or the female agenda to show the balance in the scripture, but they have no instruction. All they're taking is bits and pieces of heretical, right, doctrines, Right. And just just mis mis mishmashing it. Right. But there is no sense. If we zoom in on any of the main points she makes, 
what she does, she makes a lot of different kind of points, confounds a lot of different kind of points. That's why we're focusing right here on the Elohim and the Elohim confusion. So Elohim, when used of the, you say, the God and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, is always singularity. Again, whenever Elohim is used right, of, we say, Elohim HaAb, Elohim HaAb. By saying Elohim HaAb, it's saying God the Father, Elohim HaAb. We're not talking about many fathers. We're talking about the Ab. Right? It didn't say Elohim Ha'abot. That would be Elohim, God's the fathers. Right? No, we're talking about Elohim Ha'ab. Whenever Elohim is used of other people's God constructs, God conception like Nepal, Shaddai, and so many others, we're speaking about other people's gods. And that could be plural, whatever. There could be two, three, five, ten, twenty, a whole council, whatever, as she pretends to be. The, the problem is people don't know the Hebrew. That's the problem, that, that people don't know the Hebrew. And they're having this conversation, right, based on their faulty understanding of the KJV, the English, and then coupled with some pseudo-experts, ones that have some, maybe they graduate from college, they got some big degrees, they got big names, they got big CVs and resumes and accolades, so forth and so on. And then when I heard her make the point about, well, Michael Herschel or somebody like that, I think that was the name of Herschel or something, and what he was saying, you know, he was saying that the Nahash and the Seraphim are interchangeable. They're not interchangeable. They are really not interchangeable. And that can be proven if you only could read the Hebrew scriptures. So this makes our job a little bit more, a little more challenging. Not to say really just difficult. It's challenging. So here let's go to Isaiah 43 and 10. So Elohim, right, has a singularity and a plurality. Elohim in the Hebrew has a singularity and a plurality. Well, one says Yadin. Yadin, well, when, does it, when is it singular and when is it plural? Well, bring to me a text. Bring to me a Hebrew text. Now, the translation in many places in KJV does, I guess they done, did, they do, does, do's their best. They did their best to translate. And King James Version is a good point of reference. Right, but whenever there's a controversy, you gotta go to the, we say to the primary sources or the backing sources, such as the Hebrew for the Old Testament, the Koine Greek for the New Testament. So here, Yeshaya, Isaiah 43 and 10, where it says, "Ye are my witnesses," saith Yahweh. Right, Y H W H. Translated here as Lord. Now. We might do a video on this, but Lord, L-O-R-D, is the Gentile tetragrammaton. Did you know that L-O-R-D is the Gentile's tetragrammaton? Tetragrammaton means the four letters. They use L-O-R-D. Who is L-O-R-D? Right? We know it in the Hebrew as Yahweh, hey. Yod, hey, we, hey. Yahweh, Yahweh. Right? Some say Yahweh. Right? He who be, who he be, bringing out the sense of it. Yahweh Jehovah does not mean I am. That's Ehya, Ehya Asher Ehya in the Hebrew. Here we have it in third person sense. He who be who he be said of himself, I am that I am. When we refer to he who be who he be, the one who said I am that I am, we don't say that we are. You know, we don't say I am that I am. That's that's his. That's his. We refer to him as he who be who he be. Thus the Yahweh. Yahweh, right? Some would say, or Yahweh. And if you understand the Hebrew, you'll understand why all of those are correct according to their context. And my servant, so he says, Y'all are my witnesses, saith Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know. So only the witnesses, what have you witnessed? So when ones and ones are going into the Bible to make some of their, their paltry points, Right against sound doctrine. Give thanks, brother Jesus Minister, for pointing out the sound doctrine, the sound teaching. Really, sound doctrine. If you look it up in the Koine Greek and you bring out the translation, we can say healthy. It's unhealthy teaching. Right? It's unhealthy teaching saying that Yeshua was the the snake, the serpent in the garden of Eden. Who believes that? So one person put up there. They said that it was on the dumbest. 
one of the dumbest um, topics ever. Well, if that be so, well, this is where we're at, right? And because this is what we're going to have to deal with. We're going to have to deal with, as they say, we're going to have to deal with the dumb shite, right? But firstly, foremostly, right, let us, let us get to the, the teaching, right? Let us get to the root of the matter. So she refers, she, she takes off Jehovah Elohim and she just says Elohim. She follows the serpent's reasoning. She really, she really does follow the serpent's reasoning. And the more I'm hearing her speak on these things, and the more I hear her, you know, the more I hear her articulate on these things, I say, wow. I say, it's like, it's like evil has found, you know, a willing serpent. <laughs> I mean, a willing, <laughs> a willing servant, right? A willing servant. There are some points that we are inclined to agree with, but it seems as more and more as she goes about what she goes about and the more and more that ones and ones, you know, like like Sarnetta and others hype her up. Right. The more and more that she goes about it, the more and more that she falls in the fall. And the fall means to fall. She falls from those areas where she might have been making more sense. So it's like as we hear this go on more and more, you know, it seems more and more. You know, just more and more unredeemable, right? And we're not saying that is that's the way it is. We're just observing, observing it at this very time, this very moment. Because first of all, the first point, and it's like the soft point she comes out with, is confusing ones, maybe because of her own confusion about the nature of Elohim. She believes that that the word Elohim only refers to a plurality. Of gods, a plurality of gods. So she sees Elohim as they. Although in the Hebrew, when referring to Yahweh, hey, Jehovah, right? Yahweh, when referring to Yahweh, refers to it as he. She believes, like the serpent does. The serpent is the one who came to the woman and instead of saying, has Jehovah Elohim, has the Lord God? Notice the serpent doesn't say, has the Lord God. He don't say it has the Lord God, all right? Might have to touch on that point right here so that ones and ones can see this for themselves. He doesn't say has the Lord God says. He just says has Elohim said. Because the serpent being more subtle, he uses subtle distinction to see whether they were paying attention. All right? He uses subtle distinction. Let's bring this up right here because it's important for us to go here so that ones and ones can see this for themselves, right? And whether they agree or disagree, right? Right. Let's go right here. Let's go right here. Here we go right here. Right. Lord God. Right. Lord God. You see, when we get to Genesis chapter two, we have Yahuwah Elohim. Yahuwah Elohim. In the day that Yahuwah Elohim, he made. It doesn't say they made. Yahuwah. He who be who he be. The powers. The powers. The powers in the singularity. The powers. So Elohim in its direct sense refers to the powers. But the powers may be. The powers as other gods, multiple multiplicity of gods, like among the heathen, and among other nations, or as revealed to Yisrael, as revealed to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. You see why Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are important is because they were breaking this fallen trend, this fallen trend that began with the choice of Eve and Adam of choosing both good and evil. Her idea of the God of Aden is that it was a bad thing. It was a bad thing. And she totally disregards the disobedience factor. She says that Elohim was seeking to keep from them wisdom, right? So they'd be able to choose between good and evil. She seems to forget that when Adam, right, was made in his image after his likeness, male and female created he them, on that very day, it was very good. It was told me'od. So, Consider this, you're in a very good situation. See, this is hard for us to imagine or even really think about in its truest sense because of the experience of humanity over the several thousand years. Right? Another point, too, is that the Bible does not say the earth was created in 6,000 years. I don't know. These are kooky ideas that other people trying to figure out the Bible have made up 
and then they stick it on the Bible, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, Western Gentile, counterfeit Christianity, and then people begin to believe that this is what the Bible is saying, no matter how hard they read, they don't read in the Bible where it says 6,000 years ago or 6,000 years, but they make believe because they're following the serpent speech, the serpent rhetoric the reptilian cortex of the brain. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit more about the reptile, right? The reptile, the reptilian in the Bible, the reptilian in your brain, right? So these are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when they, they, the heavens, more than one heaven. Notice the word heavens is Shemayi. The word Elohim is plural, like the word Shemayi. But when referring to Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Jehovah, Elohim is in his divine, his divine singularity, not in plurality, right? When he made. So if one were able to comprehend and understand the Hebrew, they would see this very interesting grammatical. In other words, when referring to Elohim, the true Elohim, Ha, we say Ha Elohim, the Elohim, not just any old Elohim. Right? But the Elohim from the beginning, the creator, Ha Elohim, the powers, the singularity, Bereshith, Bara, Bara is he made, right? Is he created, actually he created, Bara, Bereshith, Reshith in the Hebrew, Reshith is brought out in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 and that's wisdom, Chokmah, Chokmah. Right now, ones need to leave the divine chokmah out of what occurred in Genesis chapter 3. There was no wisdom there. There was no wisdom. So the woman looks at it and she says, it's a tree desired to be wise and seemed in her, it seemed in her own subjective view. This is the same thing with the Paul Shada and others. In their own subjective view. Not the objective view, but their own subjective view. This is how Isha the Hawa Eve got deceived. Let's go forward right here. Right here, here, here. You see in verse 5, we have Yahweh Elohim, Jehovah Elohim. Jehovah Elohim. He had not caused it. It don't say they had not caused it. Right? In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and Yahweh Elohim formed, reading the Hebrew, he formed, not they formed. He formed man. He formed man, and notice the word for man here is Adam, right? There's another word for man, Ish. He formed Adam of the dust of the ground, right? Of the dust of the Adama. You want to know who Adam's mother is, right? In the context, we say Mother Earth. Well, the, the ground here is the Adama, you see? See? Man, Adam, right? Formed man, Adam, of the dust of the Adama. Of the dust of the Adama, the land, the ground. Scroll down right here. You see Adama, parts of speech. It's a noun feminine. Right? It's a noun feminine. Over here, man, Adam. Scroll down here. It's a noun masculine. It's a noun masculine. So, Yahuwah Elohim, he formed, not they formed, he formed Adam of the dust of the Adama, of the Afar, the Afar, the Afar. You know, in the east, especially the Horn of Africa, where we get the, the great lakes, the rivers, where we also get the root of the waters we find in Genesis, Garden of Eden. We get the Gihon that surrounds all of Tobia, Ethiopia, Kush, the Kui land, right? We have the Afar, the Asedamar, the A Asedamar, the Ayedamar. They call the Afar, a tribe of people, a very ancient tribe of people is also known as the Afar. Just want to point that out, but the word here in the Hebrew, the Afar, is the dust. So, Yahuwah, the Elohim, form, he form, singularity, he who be who he be. See, this brings out, in the sense in the Hebrew, there is a grammatical, um, what's it called right here? I was checking out this particular book. Now, there is the Hebrew Trinity. There is the Hebrew Trinity, but that's not the point right here. There are passages are numerous in which a grammatical agreement between the subject and predicate. We meet with a construction which some modern grammarians who possess more of a so-called philosophical 
than of the real knowledge, the real da'at, the real gnosis, the real scientia of the oriental languages or the language of the East, right? They call this pluralis excellente, right? And so what happens is that they find that in certain areas, for example, when Elohim is being referred to, to Jehovah is referred to as the Elohim, Ha Elohim, Hailehim, the powers, the power in singularity. They say, well, the word Elohim, like Shemaim, heavens, is plural. So therefore, it should be they. But then they notice in the Hebrew, the verb is he. <laughs> and they say, oh, there's something wrong here. Right, and they get into a lot of speculation, philosophy, goofy, wacky stuff. It was almost like listening to some of Nepal Shaddai's some of her responses to try to make this point. She was going over the points that have convinced her that Yeshua, Yahweh Shai, she says that Jesus was the snake or the serpent in the garden, and that Elohim was the evil. Elohim, you hear go on, Elohim was evil, Elohim was bad, Elohim was evil. You know what I'm saying? Not understanding the Hebrew are not understanding what ones claim to understand, pretend to understand. Remind me of what Paul says, you know, wanting to be teachers, you know, ones and ones wanting to be teachers, but, but don't even understand, right? Don't understand. But let's go on right here. So here man became the Adam, right? Became a living soul. Now it's interesting, man became a living soul, right? Chai, right? Living and the soul is nefesh. Right now, nefesh is interesting because those who've been listening know that nefesh, let's go down here, part of speech is a noun feminine. So that's to even the point that Black Jesus Minister made that Adam, right, was both male and female within the full sense, the full sense. Now, this will now make people start to think about, you know, the gender wars, gender fluidity and transgender and everything else. And the androgene, the and that's another point right there. We can touch on it based on the scripture, because what the Hebrew scripture is bringing out is the truth, is the truth. But the translation, a lot of things get lost in translation. And since people already have their ideas right, or ideologies or philosophies. They are trying to justify, you know, like, like follow the evidence to where the evidence lead, right? Don't take the evidence, you know, to prove your thesis, but let's look at what the evidence proves. So based on what the evidence is proving, let's go on right here. So here we get Genesis 2 and 8. Once again, Yahweh Elohim planted in the Hebrew. He planted, not they planted, a garden eastward in Eden. Now, people don't pay attention to this right here. They think they pay attention, but this is another point to prove reading comprehension, right? He planted what? A garden where? East within Eden. So it's the garden of Eden. All of Eden was not the garden. Again, he planted a garden eastward in Eden. Eden, right? A garden eastward in Eden. Where? Eastward in Eden. So when we say the Garden of Eden, we're talking about the garden that was east. Look to the east, east within Eden, right? Eden, Eden means delight, right? Just to bring that up right here. Eden means pleasure. Eden means delight, right? Eden, right? And get to the, get to the root, the root word right here. Let's go to the root word. Eden, Edna, Edna, luxury, dainty, delight, finery. Right to show what sort of place. So you hear people talk about, oh, they was in the garden, and you know, like like either the garden was a bad place, or you know, the garden was some prison. They're going into the Zachariah stitching, the Anunnaki. They're mixing up a lot of these other people's gods. And this is one thing that if you read the scripture, but yet they say they're Hebrews and they're Israelites and they believe in Yeshua and all of that, right? But if you read the scripture, there is a demarcation between the gods or the Elohim, which is the God constructs. So what ones and ones like Nepal Shaddai is seeking to introduce is this faulty God construct of other nations, other, other ideologies of other peoples. And when you do that, it's like a gumbo. You just put everything in the pot or like Kalalu or something like that. You just mix everything up like that. But in the scripture, the same scripture that once points as a point of reference, there's a clear distinction between other people's gods, other people's Elohim or Elohim ideas, and Yahuwah, Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, the Elohim, right? 
and the verse I brought up previously hopefully will circle around again to that because that's going to be important right here in making this point right concerning the Elohim deception whose Elohim are you talking about right like whose Elohim are you talking about right because the serpent right was not talking about well the serpent was deceptive he was subtle he was deceptive so the serpent made Eve and Adam made the woman, the Isha, and the Ish Adam made them believe he was speaking about Yahweh. But we're going to prove to you that he was not. If they only paid attention, if they only paid attention instead of looking at it subjectively, looking at it from their, you know, selfish selves, so to speak, right? Genesis 2 and 9. Because remember, here is where we get the instruction. Remember what the, the, the Nahash said to Hawa? I mean to Eve? I mean, well, this is before she was called Eve, to the woman, to the Isha. Have, have God said? Have Elohim said? Have, yeah, no, no. First word, according to King, King James Version. Yay, yay, yay. You know, like somebody says, like, they, they're going to ask you a question and they answer it off with affirmative. I don't know if you know about, you know, certain ways to trick, right? But the serpent had the ways to trick. It says, now the Nahash was more subtle than any beast. He was a what? How can I say that than any god? He wasn't a god. Some, some Nepal Shaddai, others make one believe that he was Jesus or something like that, right? But he's more sub subtle than any beast of the field, which Yahweh Elohim had made. And he said to the woman, the Isha, yay! Hath Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. You shall not eat of all the trees. In the Hebrew, all the trees. All the trees. So the serpent was like, you know, like what they do even on some of the platforms, like the black, you know, <laughs> conscious platform. It was hype. They hype it up. They hype it up. The, the Elohim said you can't eat anything. Basically, the Elohim said that you're in this, this garden of delight, this, this luxurious place, place of pleasure, and to starve you to death, to starve you to death, mm -hmm. like putting somebody in a mansion or some, some, some place and they have all sort of stuff there and has the person told you that you can't enjoy nothing here, that was what he did. But notice how he asked the question, hath Elohim, hath Elohim. Let's go here. Genesis 2 and 9. And out of the ground made Yahuwah Elohim, he made, Yahuwah Elohim, he made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. So, see, some liars and deceivers will make you believe that only the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was, was what does it say right here? It says, when she looked and the woman saw that the tree was good for food, she saw that it was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise. All this is subjective. All this was based on the resonance of the reptilian speech and the woman's reptilian cortex. The, the woman and let's add on the man. He was passive in this whole situation, right? She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Why didn't Adam say anything? Why, why did he say nothing? Because here, according to Genesis chapter 2 verse 9, as we move forward right here, my right, chapter 2 verse 9, right, it says, Okay, here verse 15, we're going to just follow up in this chapter. We're going through chapter 2, the chapter before the, the trick. The trick chapter is chapter 3. The trick, the trick knowledge. Chapter 3 is the trick knowledge. And a lot of people get tricked out by the trick knowledge because they will listen to the serpent voice. Genesis 2.15, and Yahweh Elohim took the man. He took the Adam and put him into the, the garden of Eden. Now, it's the garden of Eden, but Eden is not a garden. Some people pretend like Eden was the garden, right? No, the garden, remember, east within Eden to do what? To dress it and to keep it. So what was Adam's job? Adam's job was to serve, to work, to dress it, right? And his job was to shamar, was to guard it. So Adam was to be a worker in this garden and a keeper and a guardian, a guardian. So now the Nahash came, right? 
verse 16 and Yahuwah Elohim here's the verse verse 16 Genesis 2 16 and Jehovah Elohim it doesn't say an Elo does it say Elohim does it say God commanded all right does it say just just Elohim commanded no it says Yahuwah it says Jehovah Yahuwah right it says Jehovah Elohim commanded he commanded not Jehovah Elohim, they a divine council of, of serpent, reptilian beings, you know, that he had to ask and what you think about it, so forth and so on. Now, to the question of the man has become as one of us, that's very easy to explain from the Hebrew scriptures and according to the Gnosis, the Gnostic, the Da'at, the science of the Hebrew scripture. That is wisdom. That was wisdom who Yahuwah Elohim was speaking to. Because this is why we get the wisdom according to Solomon, the Proverbs later on that brings out that sense, right? But all of that was not known way back here, right? What was known way back here was that Jehovah, the Elohim, singularity, the Elohim, he. So yes, he is the powers. He has many powers, many attributes, many abilities. Yes, he's the nature of natures. Right, like the the net uh, of the net, uh, you know, the netaru. He's 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 the attribute. He has the at, he has all the attributes. He has all the powers. This is why this term is exclusively his. But after the fall, right after the fall of humanity, people made up a lot of make up things. We even have Eve saying of at, saying of Cain, sin of Cain. After it says that Adam knew his wife, we have Eve saying of Cain. That I have gotten a man from Jehovah. Now she's speaking. She's preaching. She got a man from Jehovah. And what does Robena Yeshua HaMoshiach says concerning that man? Ye of your father. He was a what? Murderer from the beginning. Ye of your mother. She was beguiled. She was hoodwinked. She was bamboozled from the very beginning. And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Wait, wait. Hold on for a moment. He spoke to Adam. So you know Adam. Adam is the Adam. You see Adam? That's what underlies that right there. KJV translated as the man. Wait, wait. What did, what did the Nahash, the serpent, say? He said to the woman, Yay! Hath Elohim said, Ye, y'all, shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Y'all can't eat of all the trees of the garden. But what did Yahuwah Elohim say to Adam? To the man of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat uh-oh uh-oh but verse 17 of the tree of the knowledge see here's where they get tricked out they think that that is the wisdom the wisdom of good and evil some people think when you have knowledge automatically you're gonna get wisdom some people think that if you have knowledge you're gonna automatically get wisdom some people think that knowledge and wisdom is the same thing Mm -mm -mm. They haven't read Proverbs where Shlomo HaMelech, he breaks it down, right? That the true knowledge, right, gotten the right way leads to wisdom. But knowledge gotten the wrong way, it leads to death. Uh-oh. But, but Elohim lied, she said. Elohim lied. But what did she say before she said? What she said, she said, she said, the first she, what did she say? She said, she said, um, she said, the serpent, the Nahash beguiled me and I did eat. See, this blows out that, that, that Nepal Shada and other people philosophy about the, the serpent was the good one and Elohim was a liar, so all that goofy stuff. That, that, that is other people's gods. That's other people's gods. This is the reason why the Hebrews were separated from the other people. Now to have some pseudo Hebrews come with this nonsense in, you can say in Yahweh in Jesus name, in God's name. This is like why that what what the Israelites went through. This to me proves that no doubt Nepal should I yeah they, they are Israelites yeah they, they are Israelites but not all who are of Israel. The serpent beguiled me. The, what, what the woman said the Isha said what Isha Isha what you say the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Uh oh. Uh-oh, he beguiled. See, the woman knew she was tricked out way back when, according to the scripture, she knew it. But now you got some people saying, oh, no, you see what it really was. See, it's like, that's like, that's like what the serpent was doing. You see, what it really was is that, is that the, the serpent was the good one and Elohim was the bad one. 
And after that, they got wise. They, they got to know wisdom because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They got wisdom. And what do they base that on? They based it on what the woman said when she was beguiled. Right? And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise, she took thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. But they said, well, go on to verse 7. Okay. And the eyes of them both were open. Open. Yeah. Now, people say this is a good thing because their eyes were closed. This is a Hebraicism. They saw something they didn't see. You know, you know when you messed up, when you done something wrong, you done did something wrong, you thought it was it's gonna lead to something good for you. But then when you got to recognize, oh shite, you know, your eyes are open now. Because if you saw that beforehand, you would not have done what you done did if you saw it beforehand. But the, and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked. They knew they were naked. But hold on for a moment. Notice that in verse 25 it says, and they were both naked, the man and the and his wife and his ishto and they were not ashamed in other words yeah they were naked but they didn't they didn't they, they, they it didn't bother them but now but now they still naked this bothers them because what they get to know they got to know shame <laughs> they got to know shame right remember it's the knowledge of good and evil Right, as Bourdieu even said, right, he said that uh, the problem is that we chose, our ancestors chose, and we chose through our ancestors both good and evil. And then we got so tricked out, got so hoodwinked, bam bamboozled, that we thought the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was going to give us wisdom. Well, there's all kind of wisdom. James talked about the wisdom from below. Remember the beast? It said he was the beast of the field, of the field of the earth. He was not a beast from heaven. He was not a, a, a seraphim. The Nahash in the garden was not a seraphim. I repeat, the Nahash in the garden was not a seraphim. Now there's there's the seraphim and the Nahashim in the wilderness. But this is a particularized use of it right there. We'll touch on that when we touch more on the reptilian in the brain, right? But here, 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 it says the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Wow. So they sewed fig leaves. I mean, what, what kind of garment is fig leaves? Hmm. Wow. Okay. That's the, that's the, that's, that's the wisdom there. Right? Is that the wisdom you're talking about? See, it didn't say that Adam looked upon the tree or they looked upon the tree and they talked about, you know, actually the tree is good. No, 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 no. It just said that the woman, subjectively speaking, the soul, the feelings, the emotions. And I submit to you that a lot of ones are riding on these, on these goofy, right, heretical, um, pseudo-esoteric, pseudo-arcane, pseudo-metaphysical what the Bible talks about is science falsely so-called. To sum it up, it's science, it's gnosis, knowledge, gnosis pseudonymous. It's the very same thing that happened in the Ganba Aden. Right? We have the scriptures, we have the Bible, we have access to the Hebrew, we have the ability to know the truth for ourselves, but instead ones will go with this gnosis pseudonymous, false, false thing. Say, say all they want to say about what happened in Genesis chapter 3, but then they don't go on and say, well, if that is so, then why would the woman say the serpent beguiled me? To be beguiled, beguiled, like tricked. He tricked me and I did eat. When, when the man was asked, when the man was asked, right, has, who told you that she was naked? Who told you? He said, they didn't even know they were naked. You know, this reminds me of, it reminds me of a lot of the native people like around the world, like but when the European was going around um, uh, <laughs> up and down to and fro in the earth, right? He was going around and he's seeing all these people, right, in different parts of the world, Africa, Asia, South America, other places, and they basically were naked. They, they wasn't shamed about it. Right? They didn't have this Western Gentile. They didn't have no shame about it. They were, you know, and these other peoples, you know, so be it. They can be that way. But the white man, he was, he was so much shame-faced because they were not ashamed. They got to know shame when the same type of serpent taught them shame. 
I don't know if you get what's going on here, right? It's the same sort of thing. But anyway, they ate, right? They ate. And he said, he said, right? He said, okay, before we get to what, what, what man said, this is, this is Genesis chapter 3. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Who was commanded here? Who was commanded here, the woman or the man? This is why Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christ, is the last Adam to replace the first Adam. He's the last Adam. Notice when it says that he was the last Adam, if he's the last Adam and therefore his likeness here for our sakes is to Adam, then he could not be the serpent. He could not be the serpent, right? And the man said, the woman, <laughs> snitch, the, the snitch, the, the, he told, he said, the woman, he, he, he could have stopped there, but he said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. You see, this is also part of the consequence of the, the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Notice, they were naked, they didn't know shame. Now their eyes were open, they saw they were naked, they was ashamed. They ran about sewing fig leaves, salad dressing, fig leaves on them, right? Hiding away. Adam is asked directly, who told you that you was naked, right? Have you eaten of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that I told you not to eat? Have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to eat of, right? And he says, instead of saying, yes, I'm sorry, I was wrong, yes, I did so. He says, the woman. So you see what's happening with this good and evil. The only thing introduced into the equation right here from the very beginning was evil. And this is because of disobedience. It's like today, if you tell your child, don't go, don't mess with this, right? Don't mess with this, right? And they go mess with it. Like there's a gun in the house, right? And it's, 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 it's safely put away, but it can be accessible. And you say, don't mess with it, don't play with it. Right. And then you come back. Right. And see your family, some members of your family shot and blood all over the place. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and your child, the child you told, don't play with the gun. Did you get it? I mean, is there any consequence to that? Some will say, well, you should have hit the gun away better than that. Mm. I guess that's why your life is the way it is. If you if you if you think that way. Stop thinking that way and maybe it'll change for the better. But others would say, well, the serpent said that you will not surely die. <laughs> I wish they brought out the Hebrew, right? You're not going to really, really die, right? You're not going to really, really die, right? And right here, 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 notice once again, Yahuwah Elohim. So throughout chapter 2 of Genesis, throughout chapter 2 of Genesis, we find the the special um the special mention notice in two and notice notice this right here it begins off in the beginning we have elohim right the power in singularity the creator powers the powers of he who be who he be through wisdom through hokma right through sophia right the divine feminine principle and the divine feminine principle this is way beyond eve this is way beyond eve it's like the God power of Ha Elohim Ha'elohim is way beyond man. But yet man was created in his image and after his likeness. So there's potential, right? You know, like, like, like a, a son, you know, potential. He can't really be his father, you know what I mean? But he can be like his father, hopefully in good. But you notice everywhere in this chapter, right? Chapter 2 is Lord God, 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 right? Right? That, that's according to translation. Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God, Lord God. We go through the whole chapter. But now notice this right here. We come to Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle. What does subtle mean? Arum. 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 Now arum is a very interesting word. Arum. Notice this right here. In this usage in the Bible means cunning, crafty, but it's always in a, it's usually, rather usually in a bad sense. Right? And it comes from Aram, Aram. Aram means subtle, shrewd, crafty, Aram. But it also means in the Hebrew to make beer, to make naked, to expose, to expose, right? To expose. Now, 
Some will say, well, this proves that he, he was, the serpent was trying to help out Adam and Eve because the serpent was a part of the members of the divine council in heaven that was called the Elohim. No, the Nahash, right, was, was one of the beasts of the field that Jehovah, the Elohim, made. And this particular beast of the field, this Nahash, disrespected his creator in order to trick out those who would be the head of this creation. Basically, what, what it was was that the serpent and the serpent's kind right, felt that they were robbed of something and they sought to rob the one who was going to take their place of something. It was basically jealousy and envy. But I don't know if y'all can really see this right here. Let's point this out. And he said, the serpent said to the woman, Yea, hath Elohim, uh-oh, hath Elohim, wait, wait, wait. Have Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now, we just showed you that. Look at this verse here where it says, Yea, hath God, or hath Elohim, right, said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Right? Ye shall not eat, akal, of every tree. Right? When you look at it in the Hebrew, it's like saying all trees. You can't eat anything. Right? Now, notice what the serpent asks. He says, hath God right half Elohim now that word af the yay af af in Hebrew af in Hebrew has a sense of like for sure af like for real for sure let's go down right here for sure right it's like it's like saying like you know you ask me so did you do this thing and I respond saying okay so so or like yay it's like a yay sense but it it, it comes out in the Hebrew saying like he has said this. He really has said this. The, they add a question here, but it, it's kind of like, you know, like sometimes people might ask a question and you're not sure if it's a question because what they said can also be taken as a statement. This is how, that's how subtle he was, right? This is how he kind of split his, right? Hath Elohim, right? Hath, they said the devil's in the details. All right, the devil's in the detail, the deceptions in the details. When you study, you find the deception. All right, Elohim said, but wasn't it Yahweh Elohim? Why does not the Nahash say Jehovah or Lord God? Why is it not read, Yea, hath the Lord God said? Instead, it says, Hath God or hath Elohim said? This is the first disrespect right here. As you go through the rest of the narrative, he continues along the same line. He never once, he never once mentions Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh. He doesn't mention. He always says it's Elohim because he understands the trick, right? And he already caught them. In, see, he should have been shut down right here, 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 right? The Adam should have, should have said, said to, to Isha, said, excuse me, excuse me, baby, excuse me, honey, or whatever. You know, like he just said, let me take this. I, I, I got this. He said, I got this. Adam said, I got this. See, that we learned from Yeshua HaMoshia. I got this. All right? All right? Back off, snake. All right? Because, first of all, in the question statement, he implies that Elohim, see, see, he, he should have been shut, shut down from right there. All right? Because he did not say the covenant name. See, he wants them to break this covenant, but he doesn't mention the covenant name. Instead, he appeals to their selfish selves. He appeals, right, to their weakness, even appealing to the Isha, because understanding the nature, you know, like, like certain animals can see more things than we can see, can hear more things than we can hear. So this proverbial Nahash, this serpent, is now playing the polarity. He's playing the polarity. He's playing the duality. He's playing the binary. This is what the serpent did. You know, it says, um, ain't nothing new under the sun as it was in the beginning, so is in the end. He's, he's playing the binary in the end times too. He's trying to eliminate the binary once again. You know, but he two points in this opening statement. Hath Elohim said, he did not refer to Yahweh Elohim. The answer should have been no. The answer to this, to this should have been no, no, no. What did what did Eve say? 
What did Eve say? Just a little bit more right here, brothers and sisters. What did Eve say? Eve said, we may eat freely. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. Even that there is, is dubious. There's two trees in the midst of the garden. That's dubious right there. Right? She goes on to say, Elohim have said. So now she co-signs. Like when I be hearing the Paul Shaddai keep talking about the Elohim evil, Elohim evil, the Elohim was, was a serpent, the Elohim, you know, I was like, well, what the hell is she talking about? Right? But, then I, but then I recognize, that, oh, because she believes that the Hash, the serpent was the good one, and the serpent was being helpful, and the serpent was Jesus and everything. This is why she's going off on that. That's why she's saying that. It's almost like because you believe a lie, you're going to start talking this lie, and, and subconsciously it becomes you. Because she goes off and keeps going on on saying the Elohim. But if we go back to Genesis chapter 2, right? Genesis chapter 2, verse was it 16? Verse 16, it says, And Yahweh Elohim and Jehovah, Lord God, commanded the man. That's why he says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 11, Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee? The thee means you, Adam. Not you and the woman. See, now Adam knew he was at fault, right? Right? That thou shouldest not eat. And what does the man says? The woman. Yeah, you commanded me, but it was the woman now. See, all this is the part and parcel and the consequence, right, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, before they only had the knowledge of the good. All they had to do was to keep the commandment, you know, keep the one Adam. All Adam had to do. Right? Because I submit to you, if Adam never ate, it would have been a different consequence. But Adam did eat. This is why Yahuwah Elohim said to him, Have you eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And notice psychologically, his response wasn't like, Yes, yes, you got me. You got me. I did eat. Oh, my forgive me you know or, or anything to that effect instead he he goes and points the finger to the other person you know like some people you tell you tell somebody don't do something and they get somebody else along with them and the other person persuades them to do it and then you go into the person you see both of them has done it but you only spoke to one person you say to them didn't i tell you not to do that and they say well yeah but, but that other person you know you know they they, they they're the ones at fault that's a part of this faulty knowledge of good and evil, right? And there's no wisdom in it. I have to repeat, there's no wisdom. That's only what the woman, you know, it was just her imagination. It's just her imagination, there was wisdom in it. The proof that there was no wisdom in it is her own statement. The serpent beguiled me. The proof that there was no wisdom in it is what happens in chapter 4. What happens in chapter 4? Right? It says, Adam knew Eve, his wife, Ishto, and she conceived and bare Cain. And she said, I've gotten a man from the Lord. I've gotten a man from Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Notice, she didn't mention Yahuwah there in the garden when the, when, when the serpent was disrespecting Jehovah Elohim. He was disrespecting subtly there and see if they picked up on it. You know, it's like... You know your mother, your father's first name, right? And even if you call them by their first name or more personally, right? If you introduce them by this proper, you know, like the proper name, and I start to speak to them personally, you will probably check me and say, oh, no, 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 don't call them, you know, just Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, you know, because it's too formal. It's similar to what the serpent does right here, but the serpent takes off Jehovah right and then tries to split his oneness tries to make it seem as though Elohim is something else right Elohim is these others it's not the same this is why I want to get to this verse right here we're going to sum this up right here for right now just to touch on you know this is just this is part one on the Elohim right the Elohim um the Elohim confusion Right, the Elohim confusion. Okay, let's go right here. Yeshaya, Isaiah, Isaiah 43 and 10. Ye are my witnesses, saith Yahuwah, saith Jehovah, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye, that ye may know and believe me, and admit I, and believe me, and Aman, that ye may know and Aman, Aman, right, I, 
right? That you may support, confirm, be faithful, right? Establish. This is all in the word Aman, right? And when people say, well, Aman come from ancient Kemet. We can explain the Kemetic. It's Amun. Yeah, but you, you can't find the verb. Find the verb for me. That's a noun. Find the verb. I don't know if they even know what we're talking about. Since they are linguistically handicapped, don't have the Holy Spirit, the gift of tongues means that you'll be getting into this because you know there's a truth there and you'll understand by having true wisdom that some things can get lost in translation. Right? The word aman is to build up to support. The word aman is to foster as a parent or nurse. Figuratively, the word aman is to render, to render something firm or to be firm. Or to be faithful, to trust, to be live, right? To be permanent or quiet, morally to be true, to be certain, right? And we can get into some of the other senses of it, to go to the right hand, Yamin, Yemen, Yemen, right? Bin Yamin, Bin Yamin, son of the right hand, Yemen, Yemen, on the right hand of Tobia, Ethiopia, Yemen, the right hand. Hence, assurance, believe, right? Bring up, establish, right? Be faithful. Right, so this is this is the basic. It's a verb. Here's the verb, aman. People say, "Well, aman come from amen. That come from ancient. No, that's amun. What's wrong with y'all? Oh, yeah, yeah, you, you don't. You barely you barely speak English correctly and study English properly and understand words or reading comprehension. So how can we expect them to know Kemetic or Hebrew or something like that? Right? Ye must be born again. Here he says, and understand that you may know that you may what. Yada, yada, ah, yada, ah, that you may yada, I, that you may aman, I, and that you may bean, bean, right? You may discern, understand that I am He. Now, here's very interesting in the Hebrew. He who be who he be, right, is saying, Ani, who? Ani, I, who? That I be He. Now, this points to the Hebrew Trinity, the Triunity, and the Holy Trinity. But the point about Elohim is brought forward after the colon. Before me, there was no Elohim. Uh-oh. There was no El. There was no El. Right? The El of the Elohim. Remember El, Elohim? Right? See, and the thing that a lot of these ones like Nepal Shaddai's, though she claims to be Hebrew, she don't really understand the true spirit, the covenant. See, the covenant is the Yahuwah name. Yahuwah Elohim, that is one. Yahuwah Elohim is one. When did you split it down and try to say what the serpent said, the Elohim, you know, you know, was lying, whatever. The only Elohim that was lying, right, the only Elohim that was lying was the Nahash, and we could say Adam. We could say Adam. We could say Adam and Eve. <laughs> they were created in his image after his likeness, right? You see what I'm saying? It's like, um, if I have a family name and I'm Johnson and I'm Jack Johnson, I'm Jacob Johnson, my brother is James Johnson, right? And and, and my sister is 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 Susie Johnson. Just 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 saying, right? And then you say, did Johnson say that? But it was actually um John Johnson who said it. It wasn't Jacob Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Specificity, right? But what Elohim is saying right here, he's saying Hi Elohim, before me there was no L form, neither neither shall there be after me. See, from the Hebrew perspective, we know other people say God, for example, but they're gods. Some things might be a little true, whatever, some principles, whatever. You know, you might find some things true here or there, but that's their stuff. It's not our stuff. The same way he hedged about Yisrael with the with the commandments, with the Esaret HaDibarim, the ten words, is the same way he was hedging about, right, Adam Wahawa, right, Adam and Eve. The same way they got beguiled in the garden, right, psychically, they, they got psyched out because the woman would represent the soul, the psyche, and man, the spirit, right, on that particular level, on the principal level, but man got psyched out. Right? After all, he was a living soul. But he got psyched out on his feminine, in his feminine aspect. Right? He allowed, he didn't protect. In other words, what Adam didn't do, this is going to be a follow-up, hopefully. Adam didn't protect the black woman. <laughs> he didn't protect Hawa. 
he didn't protect Eve. We could say the black woman because science already says that the mitochondrial DNA, right? This this ancient, we could say, um, primordial type of black woman out of Africa, out of East Africa, Lucy, or whether someone before her or related to her, so be it, right? He didn't protect her. He allowed her to get tricked out. So Elohim, right? Elohim in the Hebrew is easily discernible from when we're speaking of the 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 covenant the the elohim in the beginning who before him there was no other and when we are speaking of other people's elohim other people's gods right it's like when we say god people say we all have one god you, you hear that a lot right people say we all have one god but it's interesting because in the scripture right in the scripture Elohim is known as our Elohim, rather. Let me say our Elohim, Ha Elohim. He is known as the God of gods, right? The God of gods. Now, how would that be in the Hebrew right there? The God of gods, right? He is the God of gods. Right here, the God of gods. Let's go down here, the God of gods. Where do we find this verse right here? Let's go down here, um, gods of gold in the Psalms. Right, I know it's in the Psalms. Let's see. Okay, because we're going on a slow search right here. Right? See that part that, that confuses them? We'll pick up on that. Psalm 82 and 6. I've said ye are gods. The judges of Israel are referred to collectively as the Elohim. The judges of Israel are collectively known as the Elohim. The next verse says, for all the gods of the nations. The gods of the nation are the Elohim of the other nations their God constructs. So what's happening is that a lot of people are confusing right, the Hebrew construct of the true Elohim, which is distinguished from all other ones and trying to mix it up. And in the process, they are mixing themselves up. Here we go. Psalm 136, verse 2. 136, verse 2. Let's seal up right here. 136, verse 2. Let's bring up the Hebrew right here. Here we go. It says, Hodu. Lelohe ha Elohim, the Elohim of the Elohim, ki le olam chasdo. So here, our Elohim, the true Elohim, the Elohim of Elohims, right? And we know this how because here in the first verse, bring up KJV. First verse says, "Oh, give thanks to Yahweh, to the L O R D in the English, the Lord. Give thanks to who? Yahweh." Right? Because Yahuwah Elohim, he who be who he be, he is the Elohim. He is the powers. He is the powers. For he is good. For his mercy endures forever. It doesn't say for they are good, for their mercy. No, there's a singularity of the true good, the true God. This is something that the heathen, right? Even the heathen minded Israelites, right? didn't understand in the past time even when they spoke Hebrew and it's something that many ones even nowadays where they have all these resources to study things for themselves and even some of us who have the Holy Spirit that can share you know that gift of tongues with them something that they don't understand today and it really shows that it's a spirit <laughs> you know it's a spirit you know what I mean it's a spirit right it's the Holy Spirit that they do not have because they cannot discern Right, the true Elohim from the other people's Elohim, and they're trying to confuse you and me and whoever they can confuse, right, with their philosophies. We're gonna yield right here, 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 but just touching briefly on the Elohim confusion, right, going to the beginning or at least a chapter or two after the beginning. Because we've touched on the Elohim in the beginning, but we need to touch on that once again to point to the real divine feminine, right? The real divine feminine, wisdom in the beginning. And I noticed this too, when the Paul Shaddai, she made that quote from James, she only spoke about the wisdom from above. She didn't speak about the wisdom from below. I thought that was interesting because that wisdom from below, that's what the Nahash, that's what the serpent was working with, that wisdom from below. And that's why Eve, you know, Eve is better than she because Eve could admit that the serpent beguiled me as the serpent is beguiling the past Shaddai's and also all others. Right? Shalom Chabarim, Shalom, the Elohim deception. Right? 
whose Elohim, right? Whose Elohim is it really? Our Elohim is not their Elohim. 